Ecclesiastes and Job, both. Ecclesiastes 7 and Job 23. Do thank the church, of course, and for all that you are and mean to me, my family, your pastor. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 11. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful. But in the day of adversity consider. God also has set the one over against the other to the end that men should find nothing after him. Facing cancer is my assigned subject. What should you do when you face cancer? Cancer is an awful word, isn't it? We think of misery and suffering and pain and heartache and death when you think of cancer. And what we should do whenever we have any adversity like cancer is consider. You waste your adversity, whatever it may be, if you do not stop to consider I don't want to waste my cancer. I would be foolish to just go on with life as nothing happened in this adversity. And so is every man or every woman who's faced any kind of adversity. Wisdom teaches us in the Word of God to stop and consider that God is at work. Amen. That's what the text says. God is at work. And so we have an inspired instruction on what to do in adversity. Cancer does not change the fact, my cancer does not change the fact of who God is and how He works. It reaffirms the fact of who He is and how He works. And so when adversity strikes, you waste it or prolong it or set yourself up for more if you do not stop to consider not only yourself personally, but you who are here. Whenever we got the word from the doctor and I we begin to tell folks about this, I know that it impacted a lot of people's lives. And that's a good thing. Brother Jackson just said, what if it were me? We had folks who said, why Brother Troy? Why him? I had all kinds, of, I've had calls like that. Why, why? Why not? Why not me? Why not you? I deserve far worse. Listen, beloved. I believe that I'm a great sinner. I, I deserve far worse than cancer. And so do you. Consider. Consider that there are at least four things that are involved or can be involved in adversity. That is why we get adversity, first of all, for the greater glory of God. Do we not believe? Have we not been taught? Do I not preach that all things are to resound to the glory of God? 
Ultimately, everything that happens in the life of the child of God is for the greater glory of God. And we must submit to the will of God and say, God, I want you to be glorified in this. I would be a hypocrite to preach for 25 years about God and His marvelous grace and His sovereignty and then to chide my God for what He's doing in my life. the greater glory of God. It may be a trial of faith, and you can be assured, I can assure you it is a trial of my faith. It may be for chastisement for sin. It may be the consequences of foolishness. And you can be always assured that one of four of those things are in play, and maybe a combination of them, whenever adversity comes in your life. There is no chance, no fate, but everything is always directed through the sovereign hand and for his people of a loving God. Here we have a trained response that will keep you from fretting, It'll keep you from rebelling and chiding the God of heaven. Now, the book of Job. I want to go to Job 1 first. In Job 1, whenever Job had great calamity in his life, Job understood what later Solomon would write in Ecclesiastes. If there was ever a man that went through the greatest that men could go through as a man, outside of our Lord Jesus Christ, Job is the man. And Job is put in our Bible to teach us how to deal with adversity and how God deals with his people. And in the book of Job, you find that Job's response to losing his possession, losing his prestige, and losing his family was that it drove him to the worship of God. I couldn't wait to get out of the hospital and go back to the Lord's house. And I thank God for that. Because that that's a God thing. In the book of Job 1 and verse 20, then Job arose after all the bad news, all the bad reports and reality had set in about the loss of his children and the loss of his possessions and the loss of his prestige in the community and all those things that were crashing around him. Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and complained and said, God, this is not fair. This is not right. You're wrong. No. He bowed. That's what worship means. He submitted to the will of the Lord on that day. He worshiped and said, God has a right to do with me whatever he wants to do with me. That's what he says in verse 21. Naked came I out of my mother's room, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. The tra a trained response. That's why the house of God's important. A train That's where you get how to act and how to react. That's why you got to get in the Word of God so you'll know how to act and how to react in a biblical, right, God-honoring way. Moves us toward the worship of God and humble acceptance as we grasp the reality of things. Job did this. And then, of course, in chapter 2, things get worse. 
Job loses his health, his strength. And his wife says, and I don't, I don't chide old sister Job. She'd lost everything too. But her response wasn't a good response. She had listened to the calamity. Uh, you know, she had listened to the, to the counsel of the world. And she brought it into the conversation of God. And she says, curse God and die. And he says... Verse 10, chapter 2, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Oh, we love God when He gives us good things. What about the bad things? Oh, God don't give bad things. Well, that's what it says. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Facing cancer. Beloved, if you'd face cancer, you must consider the fact that God has a right over you. He has a right over you. God is tender in his care of his children. Even in this situation in which I'm in. In the book of Job 23. You have Job in the midst of all this going on in his life. And here's where we find our courage to face cancer. We have a great man of God under affliction. Now, I'm not the man that Job was, I can assure you that. I have a holy standing, but I'll tell you what, my, my life, if I, you read about Job, this is a pristine man. He is the pinnacle of the child of God in their walk. And I don't know of anybody here who matches up to Job. Most importantly, myself. And it's interesting that Job, Job goes through more than I've gone through. I've said this many times as I'm in conversation about cancer. Job lost his family, his children. He lo and I hadn't lost my children. I got six children. I hadn't lost one of them yet. Thank God for that. Job lost all of his children in the same day. Then Job lost all of his possessions. I still got some possessions. I still have a house to live in, my, my bed, my house payments being made every month, my ledger bill pay is being paid every month. I haven't lost any possessions. As a matter of fact, I've gained a few possessions because of the generosity of folks. I have. I hadn't, I'm not as bad off as Job is. My wife has been a good counselor. Job's wife wasn't. My friends have not turned against me and started playing the blame game as these folks did. They haven't done it, not, at least not that I know of. As a matter of fact, and I believe that the men had in good intention when they came because the Bible said they wept over this and they saw Job in his great grief. But then they had a lot of things to say just weren't true. I haven't had that go. Oh, I just lost my health. I'm not as bad off as Job is. And the challenge that God had with Satan about Job was this. Satan said, if you, if you take this stuff away from him, if you, take his fa if you lower the hedges and take his family and, ta and take his possessions and take his health, he'll curse you to his face, your face. And praise God, I hadn't cursed God to his face. Job didn't either. Would you? 
Job didn't. Job cursed his day, but he never cursed his God. And the reason so is found, I believe, in Job 23. This is the blessing that faith provides in the midst of the greatest of trials. The greatest of adversities, like cancer. Cancer is a, listen, I don't minimize the fact that cancer is a great adversity, nor do I minimize the fact, nor would I be, stand here before you and say we haven't had great grief and sorrow and crying. We have, but we never lost faith. I took my little children around me when we got the news. We, I come out of the hospital. We actually had the hospital. Then at the end, at the home. And I said, listen, children, I may die. And I still may die from this. It's true. And I'm going to die anyway. And so are you. But I took my little children around me and I said, listen, children. If daddy dies from this, don't you get bitter at God. Don't you get bitter at God. God knows what he's doing. He knows why he's doing what he's doing. Don't you get, I don't want them to become bitter at God. I want them to love God and serve God. That's how I responded to it. And I did so because of faith. See, I have faith in the course of God's power, like Job says here in, uh, in, our, in our text in Job 23. Will he plead against me with his great power? You know, God's the almighty God. Matter of fact, in the book of Job, 30 times that word is used, the almighty. Of the 57 times it's in the Bible, 30 of them are in this little book of Job. It's a recognition of God and being almighty. He has all power. And the question that Job asked, and Job, listen, here was the worst thing about Job. All those other things happened, and then God wouldn't even talk to Job. Listen, God's talked to me in my adversity. But God had said, no, I'm not talking to you right now, Job. And we see the end, but Job hadn't seen the end. He's in the midst of his adversity. And he says, will, listen, will he plead against me with his power? And Job says, by faith, no. God's not against me. Hey, God's not against me. Amen. Satan has a purpose when he says, let me add him. I can't, I can't get to him. You got his hedges built too high. I can't get to him. Lower his hedges. Satan wants to destroy me and my family and my testimony. That's what he wanted out of Job. He wanted to discredit Job, but more importantly, he wanted to discredit Job's God. Hey, that, that fellow's a liar and he's a deceiver. And he's a defeated foe, Satan. Amen. He didn't have anything on my God. Amen. He doesn't have anything on him. And God's not working against me. Hey, I got more scripture than Job had. I got Romans 8, 28. Job didn't even have it, but he believed it nevertheless. Amen. That's just not a plaque on my wall or a slogan, it's real. All things, cancer, all things work together for good to them that love God. Now, I love God. Now, I don't love Him like I should. I'm not devoted to Him like I ought to be. But I love Him. I do. And He loves me. He's not going to plead. Listen, he's not going to plead against me with his power. No, but he would put strength in me. 
And Job comforts himself in the course of God's power. Job confessed that God would never use his power against him. God has so committed himself to me, and he has, that I can trust whatever he does. I can. Either he does or allows to be done or the combination of the two. You see, the believer cannot enter into condemnation. I have a righteousness that cannot fail. And I'm kept by the power of God. Now, there's scripture for all that. You, you, you've heard that preached, haven't you? Well, I believe it. I believe it now. And Job understood to some degree that God was for him even in his trials. In the book of James, I'm going to come back here. In the book of James... You know, beloved, we got to learn, and it is learning. In the book of James, chapter 1, our trials, we must learn, are praiseworthy. <clears throat> Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Not evil solicitations, but diverse temptations, which are trials, adversity, like cancer. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You know you won't have patience any other way? That is God's sovereign means to bring about patience in your life, is trials. Let, but let, you see you've got to allow this to work now. Let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, I want to be perfect. I do. And I'll tell you what, beloved, it takes trials to make you perfect. In your walk, in your sanctification. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. In the context, the wisdom is, how do you deal with trials? And the Lord will give you the answer to that. Right there in the text. Job knew that we should praise God in our trials, and that's what happened there in Job 1. He just worshiped God. And that's why he could say with confidence in Job 13, 15, though he slay me, now I prayed to be healed from cancer. Other people prayed that too. And there's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, it's right. It's good. But what if the Lord says no? Is he still a good God? Is he just as good of a God? Of course he is. And though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. All that God is and all that God does is for the child of God. And every attribute, listen, every attribute of God is at work for me. All that God is is at work for me. The course of God's power. Secondly, the correctness of God's knowledge. That's found in 23.10. Back in our text in Job 23. But he knoweth the way that I take. He knoweth the way I take. Why? Because he purposed that way. It's all laid out. Listen, cancer didn't just suddenly happen. It did for me, but in God's book it was already there. And Job confessed this. God had appointed not only Job's righteous standing, but how he would live out that standing. And Job says, he knows the way I'm taken. And 
And by this he proved Satan wrong. Satan said that Job would curse God, but as I said, he never did. And Job proved the power of God because we are kept by the power of God through faith. Faith simply trusts that God knows what he's doing and that all that he's doing is right, even when God can't be found. Job 23, then Job answered and said, even today is my complaint bitter and my stroke heavier than my groaning. Job says, you don't even know the depths of my groaning. I haven't even spoken to you fellas. And I can't find God and he won't answer me. He won't listen to me. But he's still working for me. That's what he says. And then... Finally, there's faith in the culmination of God's purpose. Oh, beloved, you might not be able to see through it, but as we sang in the song, I looked at the cross that day, and then my tears fled away. God has a purpose, and that purpose is going to culminate in my glory. I'm going to be made like Jesus. I am. I don't think I will. I hope I will. Maybe I am. It says in my text in Job 23, He knoweth the way that I take, and when He, that's God, hath tried me, that's me. Job says it's me, and I'm saying it's me. I shall come forth as gold. Now, I'm not gold yet. But when the master gets finished with me, oh, I'm going to be gold. I am. When he gets finished refining and working and molding and making what he wants me to be, I'm going to shine as the stars in heaven. I am. Job's trial would not move, remove Job from God's purpose. Satan, as I said, and God have different purposes in our trials. Satan could not discredit God. You see, whenever that challenge was made, Satan doesn't understand faith. He doesn't understand the mercy of God and the grace of God and the love of God. You see, that comes by divine revelation. He don't know everything. Satan's not omniscient. And God's purposes in, 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 uh, in Job's life teaches us that God's dealings with his believers are always full of grace. Always full of grace and mercy and that Job would have a victorious day when his trial ended. Job did not know when or how his trial would end and neither do I. Job did know, however, that it would end and he did know that there was great value in the end. And so I close with Job 19 and verse 23. Come what may, come what may. Oh, that my words were now written, and oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. Here's my epitaph. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that's all that really matters. And that, because I need a Redeemer. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Amen.
whom I shall see for myself. And mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. I pray that you know the God that I know.